engineer now turned youtuber today we discuss all things for a mind including purpose calling and challenges stay tuned to win souls for Africa. I am here to make Africans understand that we are just one people. Very hard for you to achieve your purpose. Everybody is talking. Like, that's why I don't like Flo Lumumbo, Lumumba. I was not a fan of Dr. Arikana. I was not a fan of West Seeds. I, I've, I've turned down so many offers. Hey Purpose for Gang, it's your girl Pao Bailey Adrian, and this is Purpose of Power. So basically today, I am one of Africa's most influential YouTuber and Africa's biggest YouTuber as well, a person with a remarkable story, a person that is out there changing not only the African narrative, but lives, lives of people like me. What am I? This is the best intro I've ever heard about myself. You know, I didn't even know that like, I'm Africa's most influential. I never knew that I've been touching lives. Somebody should touch my life too. <laughs> That's an amazing intro. The name right? Water Maya mm. is your YouTuber. Right? Exactly. And Bethel Winkler, if I'm pronouncing that correct, is your name. It's my name. And um, it's a German name. So being here, I feel like I'm in my country now. You know, I was named after a German you know, called Bethel Winkler. So it's like Bethel Winkler. It's just like saying Vindu. Beto, Vinkla, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, who is Wodemaya and who is Beto? Wodemaya literally means my mom, but who is Wodemaya? Wodemaya um, is a brand name of Beto Winkla. Um, I started a YouTube channel way back in China, um, and uh, I decided to use Wodemaya, which literally means my mom, for my YouTube channel. Based on the fact that my mom really supported the idea of becoming a YouTuber. And Bethel Winkler is a, an annoying engineer who decided that, hey, you know what? Engineer is not going to pay me that much, so I'm out of here. And I really wanted to go out there to, I mean, have more impact than just being at one place, just always doing one of the things. So, is that the difference between Bethel and Wodemeyer? Uh, can Bethel Winkler tell us a bit about his upbringing? I was born in a village uh, way back in Ghana called Ahim Kofi Krum. Um, I grew up there, I had all my uh, medication there um, back in the village and then from there I moved to China in the year 2013. Um, I went to China to study so I did a remote engineering and after four years I stayed in China for two extra years and from there I decided to return back to Africa to start what we call the Africa to the world by changing the African narrative through YouTube videos and it's like traveling the entire continent but one African country at a time. Yeah. As a child growing up, uh, what would you say were some of your greatest challenges that you faced as a child? Hmm. You no, know, um, growing up, it was really difficult. I went to school with um, home uniforms. So, uh, I don't know if you guys have some rice, like a bag of rice, you know, um, that is literally my school bag, you know, um, so I had that bag as a school bag, and um, I used to go to school uh, with a ton of uniform, I was a very brilliant student, don't lie about that, um, at some point in time, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm from a poor, poor, poor background, I'm from a background that is okay, but not so well off, I mean, we're managing, um, at some point in time, I think we slept in darkness for one year, um, living in the house where my parents couldn't pay the electricity bill, so uh, we ended up staying one complete year with um, no um, lights. And um, huh, this is a tough question. Another challenge is um, I think uh, if you watch a video that I bought a car for my mom, I even said it where my mom used to sell kenke. Kenke is a type of food I made in Ghana, it's a staple food um, where my mom used to. Um, loan money from people give her a loan to do the business she's doing and then there was a point in time she couldn't pay the loan and the owner of the money came and then we were just eating and then she just came it was christmas day came to insult my mom left and right and at the end of the day that was the, one of our best meal ever that day but because of the, what the woman did we all stopped eating including my dad and all my siblings so i mean we had those challenges, but it didn't stop us from becoming who we were. Yeah. Uh, just coming from 
when she told about, us about the challenges you faced as a young child growing up in yeah. Accra, Kofi, Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, what were some of your failures that you experienced as a person? Because I believe that I watched a few of the interviews you did and I didn't see like you talking about your failures. And I think failures are very important as a person because you learn from it. So what failures did Warren Maya, Beth of Wingler experience and what did you learn from that? As a person. Ha! That's a tough question, man. My first ever uh, growing up, my father always wanted me to be one of the best to them. And um, I couldn't produce the great stuff my father wanted me to produce. Um, the standard, I didn't get my first choice of um, high school. Um, I think that was my first failure, right? But at the end of the day, I still went to my second choice school. But I made a difference. I think I had one of the best grades in that. Even the school was not, uh, how do you call it? It's not that popular. You know, when you go to Ghana, we have secondary schools that have names. Like you go to GSTS, you go to, uh, how do you call it, Poche. It has names, but I couldn't go to all those schools. But the one that I had, I think I had the best grades. I'm somebody who went to the other schools, you know. That was one of my first failure. But it's actually talking that you don't have to be in the best school to make a difference. I was in that school, but I, this is who I am right now. I, I, from there, I still had to go to university. And um, even when I went to university, I was a lecturer in my university. It's not because of um, anything, because of where I was coming from. So literally in China, we have something we call, um, we have pilot students. I don't know if you've ever seen that before. We have pilots that are willing to go um, to the UK or USA to study. So I was one of the lecturers that was teaching them part time. You know, so these are the things that made me realize that wherever you find yourself, make the best out of it. You don't have to be in the best place to make the best decision. You can be down here and then make um, the best decision. I mean, fellow number two, I don't think I've had so many fellows. Another fellow number two was when. Uh, UK um, decided to refuse me my visa for going to the UK. I had a University of Greenwich. Um, I, I couldn't enter my uh, university that I want to go to. That was UK. Even I had a, a, like admission from them, but I couldn't go there because um, of uh, finances. But I ended up in China. And I think it was the best uh, time of my life going to China. So basically, like I said again, you don't have to be in the best country to make a difference. Because I thought UK, USA was the best. When I was going to China, I was just trying it out. But I went to China, I learned, I, I learned from my experiences in China, and I think I got the best version of myself when in China. Uh, you said that when you went to China, you were just trying it out. But based on a few sources that I've read from, and videos I've watched, you said that you went to China out of shame Thank because you. The UK they refused me. Yes. I, I, I always tell people I went to China out of shame. It, it was not it was not a country that I wanted to go to. I was just like, I want to leave Ghana. And then I applied to school in the UK. I got to school, they refused me the visa. Then I'm like, yo, I've already told all my friends that I'm going abroad. And at the end of the day, I couldn't go. So yo, is there any way I can get out of this country? And then that's when China came in. And I went to China. But I think it's the best decision ever. Uh, are you a person that believes in purpose and calling? I believe in both because I feel like what I'm doing is a calling. Because there's so many challenges that I face during these travels. But if it's not a calling, I would have backed up because no one is paying me. No one has forced me. No one is telling me that do this. But I, I just feel like, you know, I, I said, I normally say that what I'm doing is God's way. I'm not a pastor, yo, I'm a, it doesn't do what you know, I say I'm pastor, I'm not a pastor, but I feel like pastors win souls for Christ, right, but I am here to win souls for Africa, I am here to make Africans understand that we are just one people, because it, it's a high time Africans get to love themselves, and no one is doing it, we are not talking about politics, we are not talking about division, we are talking about positivity for Africans from different African countries to get to know other African countries, so I believe that this is a calling and believe me, um, I feel like any day God strengthens me and it keeps me moving, you understand? But purpose, I have a purpose, but you have a purpose, but if you don't have that calling, 
it's very hard for you to achieve your purpose. You say some you believe that is your calling. I am a firm believer that uh, when God calls you, He calls you. The enemy might try to divert you from there, exactly. but if it's your calling, it's your calling. Yeah. God will use your story. That's it. Your story. That's it. Yeah. So you basically, you answered the question without me asking because I, I I was gonna get to that point. <laughs> but yeah, your purpose, your calling is to change the narrative right. of Africa. I feel like it's just God using me to um, I mean, reunite his people. You know, don't forget that black people are God's children, and that's why we are just a vessel. Um, for young people or people like me who, who for the longest time believed that the West is it. We looked at Africa in a negative mindset. Yeah, and after watching your channel, of course, my mindset has changed. Yeah. Was there a point in time where you were like us? No, I was once like that. Listen, I'm that guy who never wanted to step foot in Africa. Why do you think I went to China out of shame? Because I felt like if you go out there, that is where you get all the respect. Like, okay, oh, you don't respect it because I'm staying here with you in Ghana. Well, you know, this is one of the reasons why Africans will travel all part of Africa, but they will never post a photo. But when they travel to Dubai, even China, I remember the first time I go to China, I had to go and stay in the snow and take a photo to tell people that, hey, I've made it in life. We, our education system made us believe that the West is the best. But when I went there, I realized that the West is already developed. And there is nothing that you as an African coming from Africa will do to change whatever that is going on in the West. Can you understand? Yeah, you will learn so many things that you don't have in Africa. You will acquire so many knowledge over there that we don't have in Africa. But believe me, all the things that you're going to learn in those countries, you can come back here make that change that we're looking for on the continent. Africa is still a virgin. And I've been telling Africans that it's time for each and every young African to take part in this event in Africa by investing in Africa. Listen, Africans are fans of talking. We like talking. Everybody is talking. Like, that's why I don't like... Listen, I, I, I was not a fan of Plo Lumumbo, Lumumba. I was not a fan of Dr. Arikana. I was not a fan of the, what's this Johnson name? something Johnson. He, he he talks a lot. I was not a fan because I felt like why do you guys keep on repeating yourself every single day without I mean practicing what you preach, without taking part of the change that we are all looking for. The talking will never solve the problem. You can meet Africans who are so smart, but all they do is to talk. But I feel like sometimes I also feel like there are people who have to talk for people to listen. But are we listening? Are we taking what they are talking into consideration? So that's when I decided to come up with something that I'll go there, see Africans that are doing it, talk about it, so that it will inspire other Africans to let them know that it's possible. I've seen so many people investing in farming because of our videos. I've seen so many people. We met a guy yesterday in Vinduk. Okay? This guy is... um. Are selling solar panels and after watching a video that we did of a guy manufacturing solar panels in Ghana he's like yo that is my next project after seeing your videos now I want to assemble and manufacture solar panels in Vinduk this is what I'm looking for we talk but let that talking turn into actions Africans talk too much and it's time for them to stop talking and be part of the change Africa is everything you can do everything here in Africa if only if we stop talking. And one thing, sorry. We Africans always think that somebody who talks too much is the smartest. He's just talking without doing anything. Right? But now, I mean, I got to understand why PLO, after meeting him, why he was talking. Because I didn't understand all those things. So, he is also doing things on the ground that he doesn't show. But I was not a fan when he was just talking, talking, talking. Until I met him and he showed me what he was doing. I'm like, yo, okay, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for and the encouragement that you're giving to Africans and for everything that you're doing for Africa and individuals hmm. that you probably do not know about. Hmm. Okay, to move on to your future plans. Okay. Um, don't plan to do YouTubing 
forever. No. Yeah. Sure. What exactly is the plan with your YouTube channel? You see, um, I wanted to see more Africans um, changing the narratives of Africa, and I can't do it alone. I need other people from different African countries. You know, I'm not a fan of flying. I hate flying, even though I, I love being in the plane. But immediately the plane starts to take off, I get I freak out. So I want to have a whole TV platform where you can stay in Namibia, then you go and find Africans that are doing stuff in Africa. Together with your camera crew, take a video, and then we share on that TV link where Africans all over the world can see what Namibians are doing in Namibia. That is the goal. So I have to step my foot on every African country. And as soon as I'm done, the last country, this will be what we're going to launch. A, a TV network or a Africa to the World Network or a Maya Network where Africans from different African countries can start telling us their stories from their own countries. And I will be streaming it live on a platform. The YouTube channel is there. That is how it's going to be. That is how I started. The, the guy who I told my Africa to the world dream to, he wrote everything. He wrote everything. So this is the end result of uh, the project Africa to the world. Okay, just um, a brief overview. Can you give us a brief overview of the discrimination? Because I saw that you, you said you faced a lot of discrimination in China. Yeah. What type of discrimination <laughs> did you face? And you said, there was a point in time I read that um, you stop putting your videos on Chinese channels so, so, because yeah. of this discrimination. Can yeah. you just give us a brief overview of the type of things that you experience as a person? I would say that like, when you want to experience real racism in China, it's on their platform, their social media platform. When they see you in person, they will not react like, oh, I hate you. But on their social media platform, they can say stuff that will get into your soul. So I used to post videos on social media where even you post one video, out of 10 comments, nine people are insulting you. Out of 10 comments. The worst one is go back to your country. The worst one, they, they go back to your country, you black monkey. They, they, they use that like words that you don't want to hear, you know. And another discrimination like when you are in a bars where people don't want to sit beside you because you're black. Um, even if you're going to look for a job, they'll tell you that white only. But even if you're black, we're looking for somebody who looks like Obama. We, we heard all of that. I mean, anyone who lived in China or lives in China now knows that this is the kind of racism that uh, we face in China. But I don't blame them because that is not my country and um, Africa is not strong. That's why they, they've been able to like say all of that. And, um, you know, it, it's tough, man. I don't know how, like, I think I, I, there was a point in time somebody spit on me because I was standing there with a Chinese lady. Like, you take it out, women, just spit, you know, and every, I thought people over there would, are even going to defend me, nobody. I had to run and leave the girl. I ran for my life and I left the girl. So, basically, racism, discrimination in China is so real, and when I come to Africa and I see them, like, I live in their best life and enjoying themselves, it's kind of fascinating because every African in China, on one day or the other, no matter how, Chinese people love you, experience that racism. I'm a big fan of China, I'm a big fan of Chinese culture, but they still don't like it. That's the thing. Okay, with everything that you experience, the discrimination, the spurting, all these emotional, traumatic things that you experience, was there a point in time while you were doing these videos that you felt like giving up because of all these things that you experienced as a black African living in China? I love what I do, I have passion for it, and that thing will never hold me back from doing what I enjoy doing. Um, I have to be careful because um, we were getting a lot of trash messages at some point, you know, people say when I meet you I'm going to kill you, I'm going to, you know, that literally made me a little bit scared, even um, some of my videos I had to be 50-50, even though I know that I can go all out, but I have to be 50-50, just because of uh, my safetyness way back there and um, I, I loved 
creating content. I, I love, I mean, meeting different people. Like, I was naive, you know, so I, I was willing to meet everybody, just have fun and just live my life. I, I'm, a, I'm a full positive type. Even negativity, I'll turn it into positive. And then, when I started Africa to the world, it was one of the most difficult things ever. The racism, I'm saying the discrimination that I faced in Africa was worse than what I faced in China. Do, do you know that? But it didn't stop me from still talking, preaching positivity about Africans. I was arrested. I was deported. I, I was, uh, there was a time in Sierra Leone they broke my camera. Is there a microphone? With a microphone. When we were at the beach, they wanted to fight. All these things, we still came up with videos from the countries. You understand? In, in, in Mogadishu, uh, here, just two weeks ago, like at the airport, they, they want to deport us. They didn't want to allow us. At the end of the day, they started fighting themselves. The immigration officers, they started fighting themselves. Who forced me? Nobody. You know, it's just a passion that I have for what I do. And like I said, it's God's calling. And when you know that it's God's calling, nothing will stop you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just to derail a bit, uh, I wanted to ask, why a retinal engineering? Why not education? Why not psychology? Why did you choose the career? I, 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 I've always been a fan of planes. I've always wanted to buy a plane for my mom. Like I had like, that's so funny ideas. Like, <laughs> it's a, I don't know, do I have to go back? Okay, going back, um, I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to do something unique for my mom. Um, at some point in time, I felt like my dad didn't like me. You know when I was growing up. So I thought my mom was my everything. You know. So picking the engineering course, even aeronautical engineer, I had to go and check the average salary of an aeronautical engineer. When I checked it, then I compared with my brothers because my father loved my brother. So I checked, okay, my brother is a, a Greek engineer. Oh, this one is a mechanical engineer. Their salary, it doesn't fit. Like, it's not close to aeronautics. So which means I'll be that guy who will buy a plane for my mom. I had some funny ideas. Like, uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to become an aeronautical engineer. Just want to buy a plane for my mom because I felt like my dad never liked me. But when I went to China, I felt like, oh, it's actually the other way around. My father loved me more than all of them. He was just trying to protect me in so many ways. I can't explain it here, but um, you know, when I got to understood, then I'm like, yo, I can't buy a plane for my mom now. Let me just do what I love, and then that's one of the reasons why I even couldn't continue doing what I love. Yeah. Uh, isn't it a bit funny that you studied alternative engineering, but you say you hate things? I hate flying. Yes, that's like, let me tell you what the day I got, I, I got so much hate for flying. I bought a ticket to go to Kenya to see my girlfriend, right? And then they deported me from uh, the name of this country, Uganda. So I missed that flight and th that plane crashed. You understand? That plane crashed. And since then, any plane that I sit in, I just have like, oh, if I was in that plane, I would have been gone by now. I never had any phobia for planes, when, because that was my major. But since that day, and also, you know, when you fly in China and the rest, you can't, you can't feel like you're in a plane, because I, I'm used to it. But when you think a plane takes a plane, you know that you're in a plane. Anything can happen, especially flying in Nigeria. Jeez, man, you you get so scared. Like, what is going on? Please take me down. So I just got that phobia from what happened in 2018, and from there I just didn't become a fan of planes. I observed the way you were taking your videos and how you were doing South things, South and also there's a video the of yours, world, the one about South Sudan, the one about South Sudan, and I love the creativity there. Yeah. What you did there is absolutely amazing. So my question now comes. Where do you draw your creativity from? Just right from in when I get to the country. I don't research. Let me tell you something. I don't research. I don't research about where I'm going. I get there and then I look around 
and I create something together with the crew. You know, like I just, I just love being creative when I'm in a particular place. Like yesterday, going to Katutura was not part of the plan. It was not in my plan to create a video about Katutura. But when I got here, somebody was like, I want to take you to Katutura to go check it out. I'm like, what? Then I had to sit down and learn research about what is Katutura all about? Then I found out, I'm like, yo, this is like a bitter history of Namibia. So everything happens when we get to the country, look around, see whatever is going on, and then create something out of it. Namibia is not a country that no one will tell you not to come. So I'll definitely not do a video about coming, <laughs> they, they want me not to come to Namibia. But it's going to be something that Namibians will see and they'll be so proud of their country. Based on my experience. South Sudan, everybody was scared. Yo, my mom was scared. I, I was in Utopia, my mom was still calling me. Have you arrived here? Is everything okay? I'm in Utopia, I'm not even there yet. So, based on what my mom was telling me, based on what my friends were telling me, I just had to put those videos together. You know, I if you watch the video, there was an Utopian girl in the video. I just met her. She's my friend, my classmate. She's like, why why are you leaving? Why, why are you going to South Sudan? You can't stay. And I'm like, no, I just have to go. So I had to record it. So I had to start the video like that. It all comes out of creativity. So you are just a creative person That's by it. nature. By nature. Like I've never planned any of my videos. All the videos that you watch, even I have an interview with somebody, I don't know what I'm gonna ask her. But when I get there, step by step, step by step, we're gonna get there. Um I I saw that yes, yeah. you get a thousand subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us about those two years, the, the emotions, the experiences, how you felt. Did you ever think you would get where you are today? No. Never. I mean, it took me two years, yeah, but um, I didn't know what I was doing. I was literally creating videos and you see the guy here? He's the reason why it took me two years to get to, to uh, uh, thousand subscribers. Because anytime I call him, like, yo, I want to shoot a video, come. He, he won't come. He would never show up. I never had a camera. I never had um, even a good phone to record videos. I didn't have equipment. I didn't have anything, right? So literally, I came to understand that content creation is about consistency, creating every day, right? And I was not doing that. I used to create videos six months. The next, the next video will be another six months. Or three months, the next video is gonna be another three months. So th that was like what I was doing and it took me two years to actually see the growth, right? But um, I never saw YouTube as um, doing something like as business or anything, not a serious thing. I, I just wanted to graduate. But YouTube was just something for fun, just having fun, enjoying myself. And at the end of the day, it started growing and I'm like, okay, what is happening? When I had my 2,000 subscribers, the growth from 2,000 straight to 8,000 in few days. Can you believe that? In few days. So. It's just a matter of creating more videos and then it will explode on its own, you know. You were speaking about how your vision is for Africans to join the Africa to the world movement. Now how do you uh how do you how do you advise YouTubers, African YouTubers to be specific to make the Africa to the world if they are joining this movement? How should they make it relevant? How you understand what I'm trying uh, to say? Yeah, now? yeah, when you know, like I always tell people, I'm not gonna force anybody to join the movement of the world. But if you think there is a need for you as an African to start telling your own story about your own country to make Africans feel proud about themselves let us know what you stand for integrity is everything right have that integrity of you knowing that Africa is for us all looking for so I mean know where you stand be positive about your continent and um, I mean take the continent to the world because I mean even me, when I started, I'm like, oh, I want to let everyone in the world know that Africa is beautiful. But I realized that Africans themselves don't even know that Africa is beautiful. So I narrow my message from Africa to the world, to from Africa to Africans. And when I talk about Africa to Africans, I'm talking about Africans living in the diaspora, Africans that were enslaved from Africa and they took them to the jungle, the Caribbean, to the Americas, for them to know that Africa belongs to them too. 
So that's why I've narrowed my message from Africa, we'll be heading to the Caribbean to start creating videos from the Caribbeans. And we just want to see the similarities between the Caribbean and Africa, African Americans' way of life, and compare with Africans. And yeah, so literally know what you stand for and um, preach love within Africans. That's it. Uh, you spoke about integrity. Yeah. So uh, I realized, or I also, when I was doing my research, uh, I realized that you don't have a you don't have sponsored videos yeah. or you understand yeah. exactly. there are no promotions on exactly. your YouTube exactly. channel. Why is this and what was the biggest promotion or sponsorship that you turned down as a YouTuber? Um the question again why I don't go from is the fact that they tell you what to do. And I don't want my message to be diluted. Right? So I just wanted to go dark young village annoying youtuber who is on the street of africa changing the african narratives but when a corporate comes in wear suits don't do this don't say this it's so annoying and i don't i don't want to dilute my message that's why actually that so africans are not even supporting what you're doing in terms of oh, knowing that oh you struggle or you know maya let me give you this amount of money maybe flights you know so we we do need a bit by bit by ourselves you know because we want the message to be real, you understand? I, one of, I've, I've turned down so many offers, like I think when I started creating videos about African entrepreneurs, we got a sponsorship deal from Dubai. Uh, they were flying us to Dubai to go create videos about a real estate company. The money was good, but we had to say no, because I'm saying that, I, it's not like I, I, I don't want to promote, I would love to promote, but the thing is that I want to finish Africa first. I want Africans to be inspired that it's possible in Africa. And once I'm done, I can go wherever I want to go. Yeah, but uh, there, there, there's been a lot of um, incidents like this, even in Ghana, a real estate company owned by China. But I'm like, no. Okay. Uh, I didn't welcome you, so welcome to the land of the brave, the only country where the sea meets the desert, Namibia. So when you came to Namibia, what should, what was the one one of the greatest things that shocked you? What shocked you? Got here and you were like, wow. What was that? Wow, empty country. Like the first thing, like how we drove from um, the airport to the city without seeing anybody. But that changed yesterday when I went to Katutura. It's not like the country is empty. It's not like people, the indigenous people, have been taken to somewhere else. And that is why you would think Namibia is empty. Because when I went to Capitura yesterday, it was not empty. Literally everywhere we passed, there were people parked. Namibia is not empty. Namibia, the people, the indigenous people of Namibia has been displaced. And the government of the country, the mayor of the country needs to work on how to make everybody comfortable in their own country. The inequality gap in this country is huge. In Ghana, you can see um, the high end, the middle income, and in Namibia, it's the high end and straight to like, that's what I've seen, I'm, I'm just being honest. And I don't think it's, it's the best way to live in a country, the land of the brave. I mean, everybody needs to be brave and integrated, that's it. Uh, what message do you have for Namibians that might end up watching this interview? Uh, be proud of where you're coming from. Know that this is your land and um, uh, be able to love and cherish your country. I mean, a lot of us complain about our countries, but when you travel to another country, you know that you know, your country is doing better than others. So cherish your country, love your country, and um, defend your country wherever you find yourself. What am Maya? I am Maya. I am Maya. <laughs> okay, yeah. to close this off, thank you very much for what you are doing for Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much for what you are doing for me and for people like me. What am I doing for you? <laughs> what are you doing for me? What have you done for me? Exactly. Um. Like I said before, I view Africa in a very negative mindset, a negative retrospect. Uh, but now, especially the Western South Sudan, 
these three countries are my top three and whenever I can travel, I'm definitely traveling to these countries. Uh, you have made me love Africa, genuinely you have made me love Africa and I'm so thankful for God and what God has called you to do. Um, hopefully a lot of African YouTubers can also join the movement and we can do this for Mother Africa. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here because of what I admire, you know that it's by force to subscribe. Like I said, our 2021 goal is to be an Ashao on YouTube. It's free to subscribe. Ashao, you have to pay for it. But here, it's free to enjoy the videos. Thank you so much for subscribing. I am Maya. Pamacha, Pamucha. You know.